In a shuffle algebra, the structure of algebra, algebra is A, is A0 plus A1 plus A2 plus so on, and the structure of product I explained, and uh, each spaces which we have here are symmetric, but no, symmetric may be better, Laurent. Polynomials may be not polynomials, maybe some holes somewhere, but not far from all around uh, polynomials. And uh, we, uh, if uh, you want to approve a geometric such construction, then how? That uh, first of all, we know that if you take uh, Symmetric polynomial, just usual one, one polynomial, and the, and the, and the inverse, then uh, such uh, rings can be understood as uh, equivalent cohomology of a point uh, with respect to the group JLM. And uh, this is uh, uh, really the reason how uh, it connects with geometry, but equivalent cohomology is a really correct language for that, but uh, for me, maybe it's too much to explain about it and introduce really what is going on, but at least partly of this story, uh, I, uh, it is possible to explain more easily, and uh, let us do it. So first of all, uh, we are talking about uh, Laurent polynomials, but uh, we, in algebra, we have symmetric Laurent polynomials, and uh, such uh, things are, can be understood how. We can take the group and C, and we can consider the Grotendieck ring of finite dimensional representation and well. So if you take J and C, and if you take finite dimensional representation, then for this finite dimensional representation, it has a character, and the character is some symmetric polynomial and uh, representations give us actually basis in uh, this uh, 
space and it is uh, no uh, it's Laurent polynomial but up to that it is basis from Schur polynomial and this is just yes and uh, uh, in a structure of this shuffle algebra uh, what naively we have so uh, uh, again in this case we have here not symmetric polynomials, but as I explained, the object in my algebra uh, was things like this. And here the product of the i minus the j squared. And uh, up, up to this point, it is the same things. But uh, for example, uh, as I also said, that if the function lambda is simpler, if function lambda is z1, z2, it is z1 minus q, z2 over z1 minus z2, then in this case, uh, uh, algebra all is similar product, is similar, but in hand, is just such space, but uh, without this factor. So for this case, we are just living in something like here. So it means that in this case, uh, no, because uh, the pro product is product, so it means that uh, I have on the space the sum and now I interpret these Laurent polynomials as a Gertendieck ring, or maybe let us denote it by Rn. Rn is a ring of finite space. So or ring was a very cute in your field. You look at the ring of polynomials, say, well, it's cute. Uh, Yes, uh, but Q is, uh, let us put on a simple mind at point of view, Q is just parameter, just not. Yeah, but the, the ring of polynomials doesn't depend on Q. No, 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 it does not. In uh, all what I said, that product is product. I have two symmetric things and calculate the product. What really depends? In structure of this function, q and so on, first of all, pull here because of this. And also, it's more subtle things about these real conditions because it is also a q related with this real condition. But at least what? If I consider only this simplest possible case, then uh, Algebra is the sum of Rn. Each Rn is a ring, a Gertendieck ring of representation of JLN, which I can identify with this symmetric polynomial. And because we have such kind of product, so it means that we have Rn times Rm. R n plus m, and this product surely depends on q. And now the question is what is this? And uh, this is a simple situation, and it is not very complicated to answer. And uh, uh, let me say the following thing. Uh, uh, well, uh, this uh, kind of uh, construction always appear if we construct gate like algebra and things like that and it is calling induction and restriction business. But uh, I want to talk only about induction and so what does it mean? It means that na naively it means that such construction is working how? That I take some representation 
for J again, maybe P1, which is representation of J again, the type K representation of J again. And then uh, I want to construct uh, something related with J n plus M. Sometimes it can be also a representation, or at least it's a linear combination of some representation. Product is uh, here P1, uh, it means it is a, from the point of the algebra, it is the character of a representation in some symmetric polynomial. Uh, and here it is the character of two also symmetric polynomial, and their product is symmetric polynomial in M variable and how to understand what is this from the point of view of JL n plus n. And how it is usually doing. It is very natural and uh, uh, first of all, without any cube, how we can proceed. Uh, let us, we have JL n plus n. And in third n plus m, we have parabolic subgroup and m. This parabolic uh, 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 subgroup uh, is such that the quotient third n plus m over p n plus m is isomorphic to Grassmannian manifold of n dimensional subspaces in two n plus n dimensional space or n dimensional space. Anyway, anyway it is a subgroup and, uh, and uh, so uh, uh, there is a, sit a situation when we make a calculate induced representation in principle it is working by the which way. I take p n plus m and because P n plus m is subgroup like this with zero here, then we have a map to J n plus J n. Then uh, it means that P1 standard P2 is the representation, this guy is the representation of this. And it is always uh, so if I have subgroup and uh, representation of the uh, subgroup, then I want in principle induce and constant representation of J L n plus m. No, and it is good if we are working with uh, a finite group, but here it is Lie group, but nevertheless it is, it is possible to do how? Uh, to, uh, what is possible to do? So if we have representation of this group in this representation, so uh, by this way, I can construct the vector bundle. On, on this Grassmannian, a homogeneous vector bundle with, with phi bar phi one times phi two. So what does it mean? It means that I have this Grassmannian manifold, and uh, par parabolic subgroup is fixed point subgroup of some point, and so in each uh, point of my Grassmannian manifold, I have a fiber which is like this. Yes, and after that, uh, I have a bundle over this. And this is homogeneous, and so I can take either, uh, no, if you attack an induced representation, we want to take a section. But in all cases, better to take not a section, but a equivalent a characteristic. Of, of this induced uh, representation, and uh, it will be no, it will be something which, in general, is virtual representation, and it has some character. And this construction is rather simple, and take character of this and character of this, 
and give you the character of the uh, uh, and plus n. Well, and what precisely this, uh, what kind of structure we get by this way on the sum of Rn, this is the problem for students. So anyway, what is more or less evident? More or less evident that by this way, we get some associative product on the sum of Rn. But the question, what is uh, but uh, in, in, in some sense, uh, I will give her an answer in a few minutes, but uh, this construction does not depend in Q. If we want to depend this in Q, that is, uh, we need to do the following. Let us consider uh, if I have algebra trillion, then I can go and, cons and if I have commutative ring or super commutative ring, I can consider the super uh, the algebra trillion times A, which is usually calling the current the algebra. So this is just the algebra of M times N matrices, matrix element are from A. And uh, E, in principle, can be any commutative or super commutative ring. And even associative ring is also in this case. But uh, uh, we need, uh, for this example, E is Grassmannian algebra in one variant. Yes. This is a Grassmannian algebra, and uh, we can consider uh, the corresponding to this super algebra. It is Trillian plus Xi Trillian, and uh, uh, it is super in what sense? So it means that uh, this is even part, this is a fourth part, and, uh, and the all Brackets are clear what is this. Well, the brackets here are zero, and this acting on this is uh, just a joint action. Yes, and uh, no, we can uh, consider now the category of Graded uh, representations of this the algebra, the super algebra. And uh, no, in principle, uh, what is going on? Uh, no, I skip some details, but the situation is clear. I consider bigger uh, algebra, but uh, if I am talking about finite dimensional representation, and if I'm uh, talking about irreducible representation, that ir ir irreducible representation, this Lie algebra has the same as JLM. Yes, and uh, so. Uh, no, I want representation which integrate to finite dimensional representation of corresponding group. And uh, if we restrict ourselves by this representation, that uh, uh, gratentic ring doesn't change much. The ring will be more or less the same Rn. No, the standard difference is that uh, we have additional grading. So, uh, because now it is better to understand this as graded algebra. And so, uh, 
up to this, uh, it is the same thing, but uh, representation now is finite dimensional representation of JVN and, and this part is acting by zero and uh, also some gradient there. Now, uh, no, forget about gradient and it is up to this, it's just the same thing. Now I want to use the same construction of induced representations, and so, but induced representation it means what? Now uh, we have super Lie algebra like this, and uh, we have corresponding super Lie group and also uh, no uh, 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 anyway so uh, I have group J N but now let us put some symbol here it is super group but it is over side it's a bad notation, but maybe it, is, it will be like this. And here we have, again, parabolic subgroup, also dependent in psi. Uh, well, and uh, not, nothing really changing, but because before it was the algebra, for example, uh, in matrix elements uh, were uh, numbers, but now they are elements from this Grassmannian algebra, and here we can play with such object just by the same way as we did in the usual uh, situation. For example, we can take a quotient, this by this, JLN psi over P and M over psi. Yes, and uh, what is changed? Without psi, we got just Grassmannian manifold, as I said, and now we have uh, this Grassmannian manifold with psi, and it has to be some super manifold. And what is this super manifold? It is also very, very clear what. It will be a cotangent, uh, no, tangent bundle. I think so. tangent or cotangent. I think tangent, tangent. No, right now, I think uh, as a super. Uh, I, no, if wrong, we will see it in a moment. But uh, right now, I think that it will be tangent bundle of Grassmannian manifold. In any case, if I have manifold and I have a vector bundle over it, in this case, it's then was supposed to be tangent, then I can construct the super manifold just saying that this bundle is related with all odd coordinates. And now uh, the construction is uh, this induction business, what is, is going on? Again, I uh, take a parabolic group and M, now it's depending on psi, and uh, it has a map to usual JLM times JLM without psi, even, and I have finite dimensional representation and the tensor product, and so by this way, I can construct the vector bundle over this thing. And uh, now the definition of uh, now the definition of a product is uh, uh, 
equivalent error characteristic of the corresponding bundle here. Uh, but uh, I said that I understand this algebra as a graded algebra, and uh, this has grading zero, it has grading one. And uh, uh, this is super manifold. And uh, so it is what? It is Grassmannian manifold, but in each point I have fiber function space. Yes, and uh, but this uh, manifold, it was no gradient is grading because this T uh, fiber in this point is related with this part of my D algebra. And so it has grading one from this point of view. And so uh, people usually saying that uh, it, in a way that it, it, this manifold has additional grading. So it, it is some one dimensional torus is acting here, and on a fiber it is acting by dilatation, just this way. And so uh, now if you determine product now, then you are going by the standard way. You take this, this in constant bundle here, and you calculate the equivalent error characteristic, uh, but as a graded manifold, yes, and therefore you get uh, uh, some, uh, you get some graded uh, as a result this error uh, characteristic will be virtual representation, uh, graded, and we can calculate the Poincaré polynomial of this, and it will be the result of our product. So I take P1 and P2, then I make up something on this manifold, and then I consider this equivalent error characteristic, and this is it. Uh, and now, the, uh, and what is more or less evident? Uh, this, because I think this one career polynomials so well, result is some graded space, and uh, for graded space, I calculate one career polynomial, I get something depending on Q. And uh, Q is one career polynomial, yes, and then. Uh, it, this Q, I now understand as a parameter. Therefore, we get some algebra with some product, and now this product depending on this Q. Now the question is how to calculate this uh, product, and uh, this is easy, also more or less, because uh, if you calculate this equivalent error characteristic, uh, how it is doing on a flag manifold or a gas manifold, we use, uh, we use left this point form. If you calculate equivalent error characteristic, what do you do? You have this gas manifold, and uh, you need to calculate their Equivalent character. And this equivalent character uh, definitely its formal sense that if you take some manifold, snooper or not, it doesn't matter, where some torus is acting, and you have fixed number of number of fixed points. And if you calculate the equivalent area characteristic, it will be the sum over fixed points. And term the corresponding of fixed point is easily calculated and I say something about in a, in a moment but uh, uh, I want to say that now statement
if you make up this uh, calculation, if you really calculate the character using left fixed point formula, then as a result, no, in principle, what we expect. I have character of this, it is F. I, I have character of this, it is G. And uh, as a result, it has to be symmetric polynomial in N plus M variables depending in Q. And the statement is that left at six formula give us precisely the shuffle product in this special simple case. And, uh, well, uh, uh, no, to see it, uh, I need to explain how to uh, uh, calculate uh, what is left with this formula. I do not want to do it, but I want to do what? that uh, the structure of the product <coughs> is what? It is F, again, let me write it. C1 and so on, D N plus M is equal to F, C1, D N times G, D N plus 1, D N plus M. Here we have a product. Product is uh, D I minus Q D beta. Here we have the I minus D beta alpha. Uh, alpha from this group and beta from this group. Uh, and here symmetrization. Now, first of all, because uh, uh, this function is symmetric and this function is symmetric, really this symmetrization is uh, going on over the uh, number of terms, real different terms in this symmetrization is n plus m factorials over n factorials over m factorials. And this is full symmetrization, but this is because they are symmetric. So the, the sum contains so many terms. Now each term here uh, is corresponding, uh, if you have usual Grassmannian of n dimensional uh, planes in n plus n dimensional space, then the number of fixed points is just this, just the normal number. And uh, left <coughs> fixed for structure of the left fixed formula is usually the following. So what, what we have, if we have manifold, if I have fixed point, that contribution of fixed point is what? First of all, character of a fiber on this point, it is this. If we have just first and uh, also, in the left fixed formula, we have a character on the, of a space in usual case. In a space of functions of formal series in the vicinity of this point. And uh, if we have just a uh, left fixed formula for Grasmania, then we have not this term. And this term corresponding to a character of function in the small vicinity of a point. But because we are working with uh, super manifold, we have additional bundle. And this additional bundle take care of this part. And Q, Q here just appear in the correct place because we just count the degree of this. So this formula is just it. Uh, now, uh, 
no, this is really cool what I wanted to say about this, and but I uh, promised to explain uh, this part by the similar manner, and let me do it. This is not complicated. Uh, suppose we are talking in the case we do the same things, but we are talking about product to Tasmanian algebra in two ways. Now, if uh, I do this, and uh, in principle, uh, I explain to you that it is theoretical with some complications. We can take any ring there, and it's possible to do But Look here. Uh, uh, again, that uh, in such uh, 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 situations, up to, again, some complications. In principle, I also want to have a product there n, there n, n plus m. And uh, now this algebra has two gradients, one in xi, xi1 and second for xi2. And because of this, we expect a product here depending in two gradients. And uh, what I want to say is that really we get almost uh, this object, but at least here, all dependent in two variables, Q1, Q2, but Q3 is related by this. But how it appear in this uh, situation? Well, uh, now, uh, uh, contribution in this case, contribution of a fixed point will be the following. We still have a product of Z alpha minus Z beta. And this is because uh, our point is the point of a Grassmannian. And this part describes the function in the small vicinity of a point. No, because the core, the, the better to understand it is 1 minus z beta over z alpha. And this z beta over z alpha just coordinate in the vicinity of a fixed point there. Yes, and, and this is it. But uh, now, because it is a Grassmannian algebra of such sort, that uh, situation will be forming that our Super manifold will be like this. It will be Grassmannian, but we have not one tangent boundary, but two. One related with psi one, second with psi two. And both of them will be odd. Uh, but we also have something related with psi one times psi two. And this will be even part. So this super manifold it is looking like this. Odd, the even part of this Grassmannian plus contribution of this, and the odd part is this. And uh, if you just formally and naively write down the contribution of a point, you will have one. Here we'll have this. On the top, you will have the alpha minus u1. And this and this, uh, Q1 and Q2, they count gradient. One of Xi1 and second for Xi2. But we have additional part which is corresponding to this. And so we have here the product of the alpha minus Q1, Q2, QB. Uh, uh, no, here definitely is one problem that uh, it is a rational function, but uh, we expect in principle here Laurent polynomials naively, but forget about this. I want to put it under the carpet, but up to this, 
it is a project research function. And uh, actually, this function is the same as this. Uh, I explained that if you forget about this business and just describing the shuffle algebra, that if you have shuffle algebra, this function lambda, C1, C2, and if you have shuffle algebra, this function C1 times mu, C1, C2, where this function is symmetric. Then the corresponding Shuffle product basically is just the same. No, it, it, how much it has to be seen, maybe a little bit more precise, but suppose lambda is one. It means that if you take here just symmetric function, then no, first of all, it is evident that if you take symmetric functions here and lambda is one and write down the formula for product and shuffle algebra, and that it gives you commutative the algebra, so the basic it will be the same. And if you replace lambda to this, so that algebra will be the same after some simple gauge confirmation, just a, a simple change of value. Uh, <coughs> anyway, if you believe me that uh, what we that this function is the same as what we get. Uh, we can, if we have this freedom, product of this function to sum symmetric, then what we can do? First of all, we can put here uh, symmetric function is Z alpha minus Q1, Q2, Beta times the alpha minus d1, d2 inverse. The beta I can put it at the top. After that, cancel this. And here I have the alpha minus the beta, but up to symmetric function, which is the same as q here. And so you see that I have here q1, q2, and here q1, q2 inverse. And this is just what I promise you here. We get this condition. Uh, again, it is some. Uh, uh, no, uh, no, it is good point of view, but it is surely not enough. And uh, for example, uh, uh, later. Uh, I explained that such kind of algebra, uh, it is something which is acting uh, on the on the equivalent cohomology of Gilbert schema or Gilbert schema, something like that. And so this approach is related with this by the following way: that here we have. Uh, Gasmanian algebra, but if we consider the actual dual object containing this x1, x2, and uh, looking the Gilbert scheme for this, and in some way it's related with what I'm talking. And uh, you no, know, this is not a very precise statement, sure, but it has some meaning, uh, and it's one thing, and. Uh, Other things which is also interesting and maybe only now I can mention is that you can ask me, suppose I want to consider the object like this, it will be a Grassmanian algebra, for example. But suppose I want xi1, xi2 equal zero. It is just, uh, no, in principle, I can put here any algebra and just try and, and I can repeat all this business, why not? 
For example, uh, I can take this uh, milk here, it will be constant, plus psi 1 and plus psi 2. Uh, yes, and then uh, what kind of, uh, from the point of a shuffle, it means that uh, we have not this Q3, so we have not this term which relates with psi 1 times psi 2. And uh, it is interesting, and maybe it, is, uh, it has to be some reason for this, uh, that corresponding shuffle algebra from the point of modern space is related to what people are calling non-commutative Gilbert scheme. So it means that this is the uh, ring of finite dimensional, uh, modern space of finite dimensional representation of free algebra. And the algebra which is acting here is this. Okay. Anyway, uh, what I explained, uh, I did it longer uh, than I wanted, but nevertheless, maybe it, is, it has some reason because it needed, I explained that this is the object which is interesting to deal with and it is important and so on. Yes, uh, now uh, let me go uh, and by the way, and so uh, such kind of po uh, such point of view gives uh, you a sort of Ex explanation where we can see this shuffle process. Uh, but if you ask me the role of a real condition there, uh, then uh, uh, you know, I, I, it is, uh, no, something I can say, but in real I do not understand very well what is going on and how to see this will condition geometrically or in some, in some understandable way. I think it is not known. Uh, yes. And uh, again, maybe it is not good to now, but suppose you are knowing uh, know, uh, know this and thinking about uh, shuffle algebra by this way. And uh, well, I explained to you the uh, situation with, with one and with two. And you can ask me why not three. The answer is yes, and it is uh, surely nice algebra. But first of all, uh, no, we have no. In this case, we have shuffle algebra because we, if you can make up this Grassmannian business, we get that. But unfortunately, a lot of terms in the top and a lot of terms on the bottom. But nevertheless, it will be algebra with shuffle multiplication and so on. And it is definitely connected by some way with what is people doing this three-dimensional Gilbert scheme? No, our answer is definitely yes, but the, the situation is completely unclear. So uh, if you even try to compare some algebraic information with some known things from that business, that complete confusion. So uh, no, it, it, it is just uh, because uh, uh, the subject is very mysterious and different. And now, uh, well, let's talk about all that. And now, uh, uh, let us uh, return to this uh, algebra. So we have shuffle algebra, and this uh, shuffle algebra is what? That, uh, let me just repeat what you want to study.
that. This is e zero plus e one plus e two plus so on. And uh, then e i a n is the space of polynomials. D one. Uh, here we have the product di minus di space squared. Uh, yes, and uh, this function have to satisfy the real condition, and this real condition follows from relation d1 to one to two to three to one. And I, I said it, but let me repeat that uh, what we actually studied are p have to be zero. D1, D2 over D1 is D1, and D3 over D2 is D2, or D2 over D1 is D3, and D3 over D2 is D1. And they are related with the wheel like this. Or Q2, Q1, and Q3. No, in principle, uh, you can ask what's happening if we consider a uh, more complicated wheel, and it looks like that we can do it, but all such uh, the wheel they follow from this. Therefore, what is uh, in the definition, and this, this definition will work. So our shuffle algebra is uh, just consists in function which are satisfying uh, such condition, and at least what is evident that uh, no, or clear from what I explained yesterday that uh, star product preserve this zero condition. And uh, understand uh, something about uh, this algebra, let me say, uh, uh, and uh, I want to continue at the very end of my lecture, but I want to be sure. And uh, oh, before that. Uh, in this case, P and lambda is the same. What? You mean that in P, there is this condition is the, the same as the condition of the lambda is zero of the left-hand side? Yes, yes. No, no, this condition and condition that lambda are zero somewhere, just the same. No, because uh, lambda, this, uh, it's zero. Is this so it, uh, Uh, no, no, maybe before the discussion uh, uh, about precise things, how to just algebraic uh, look into this. So, well, in principle, because of, of, uh, because of geometry or because of uh, this real condition, we like these things, but in principle, why not to ask the question? Suppose Q1, Q2, Q3 are generic. Then uh, it is possible to prove that in this case it is possible to prove the following theorem. Unfortunately, it cannot be <coughs> exercised for students because 
not very complicated, but it needs hard work. The statement is that in this case, algebra with a shuffle product uh, is uh, with shuffle product is generated by A1. So in this case, what you want to say is that it should be rational number. So what does it mean? It means that uh, I take elements for A1 and start to calculate the product by linear combination of product. Uh, I get all functions, symmetric functions in the top. And this follows on the there. Yes. And uh, uh, and uh, if you want you took Q3 is generic, then the A1 is generate all. Yes. And uh, well will condition in principle appear. Will condition appear if Q1 some A, Q2 B, Q3 C, C is equal to 1. If uh, something <coughs> like this is true, that because of similar reason, we have built condition uh, where A, B, C are just some integer, uh, non negative integer. Yes, and uh, in this case, uh, if it is like this, I can. Right, Q1, Q2, Q3, and so on, like this, and it will be real. So uh, the state, uh, no, CRM says for, for generic, it is generated by A1, and uh, what we see is that if they are not generic in this sense, so they satisfy such relation, and <coughs> this relation. People, because of evident reason, they call resonance condition. If they are in a resonance, or it is, if we had, had when we had one Q, we had on the such resonance condition Q power n equal one. But now we have several Qs, and so it is some resonance condition, and uh, well, in this case, uh, starting with A1, we can get only functions which are zero on the width. So we cannot get all in this case. So, and after that, is there, uh, just from the point of view of pure algebra, we have some very natural questions, and unfortunately, no answers. That, uh, first of all, uh, generic, generic it means generic. Generic it means that if you make a calculation over the field uh, of rational function over Q1, Q2, Q3. But uh, uh, this theorem is false in this case because of this will condition. But suppose that you take Q1, Q2, Q3, which do not satisfy any condition like this. So no will relation. Is it true that the generic means that no such relations are whole? It's plausible. But uh, if it, no, the fact is, if it is true, it's more than clear how to prove it. But I cannot believe it. So, yes, but uh, anyway, the question is interesting. And also the question is that uh, opposite question is falling. That suppose you, uh, you uh, have Q1, Q2, Q3, and uh, which satisfy real conditions, then 
Is it true that algebraal functions which are zero on the wheel uh, generate by A1 in this case? Now, for example, this question is what? That uh, suppose that uh, Q1, Q2, Q3 is 1. So it means that we have such kinds of resonance condition. And suppose that this Q are generic. They satisfy this condition. But in the submanifold of Qs, which satisfy this, is a generic point. Is it true? That in this case, this uh, subalgebra there is generated by A1. And unfortunately, it is all sound. Uh, no, maybe some simple uh, algebraic consideration can help. Uh, now, uh, now about like, suppose I have shuffle algebra and uh, lambda is such functions, and I'm uh, 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 asking about quadratic relation. is uh, what kind of quadratic uh, relation we have and uh, such quadratic uh, relation uh, uh, can be written by the following way. Uh, One way to do it is following. Let me uh, uh, use some notation. That suppose EZ maybe maybe EZ is the key. It's the sum of the i with minus i. Yes, in such it is uh, just generating uh, series, and it will be some. Confusion, maybe to avoid confusion, let us put some keys. Yes, and uh, uh, the uh, quadratic uh, relation can be written in generating function by the following e t1 times e t2, and here I can write. Down the inverse. Uh, no, uh, up to Q to Q inverse, it will be correct. Uh, it will be some mistake, but Q1 minus Q1 2, Q1 minus Q2, Q1 minus Q3, Q2. Is equal to e t2 times e t1. And here we have t2 and here minus t2 minus t1 t1, t2 minus t2 t1, and t2 minus. One 
done with this uh, quite dramatic evaluation are looking like this. No, no first of all, uh, what does it mean? And, uh, It means that uh, quadratic relations are looking very deploring. That uh, you, you know, this object is some polynomial, uh, and this is some polynomial. And the, if you write down the, that E is this, then uh, the structure of this relation will be deploring. That you get E i plus three times dj, or some dj. It's a coefficient I don't want to write now. That e i plus 2 e, uh, no, the sum j plus 2, yes. Then plus this, uh, also, the coefficient will be coefficient of this polynomial, actually. That uh, it will be the sum of four terms, then it will be e i plus one times e j plus two plus e i j plus three, and here we'll have opposite e j plus three e i plus no plus uh, similar sum. No, it, uh, what I did, I <coughs> just write down that E is a sum and uh, write what does it mean. And we get, as a result, we get uh, some uh, relation and uh, and uh, now I, sh I can formulate the problem for students if somebody wants to do it. First of all, check is this correct or not. Mistake can be in the place that I can change T1 and T2. So if possible. Therefore, check is this correct or not. It is correct up to this. And second, uh, no, uh, no, and second, it is all and, uh, uh, the structure of quadratic relation is just this. Uh, yes, and uh, by the way, uh, <coughs> What does it mean that uh, if uh, now also theorem uh, this theorem says the following suppose again we are still working not in our situation, but suppose that uh, Q1, Q2, and Q3 are generic. And theorem says that in this case, shuffle algebra, uh, no, first, uh, previous theorem said that in this case, shuffle algebra is generated by the i, but uh, uh, the additional thing is <coughs> defining relations are quadratic. And just this. Uh, 
And uh, one thing about this, because uh, you know that in an uh, algebra is generated by the I, but it has uh, uh, such kind of quadratic relation, which was uh, such relation I wrote here. Then, uh, Uh, now, if you know quadratic relation, that in principle you can say something about size of the algebra, because you no know, size uh, it's not so easy, but at least what we can do. So uh, our relations says that if uh, algebra is commutative, it means that if you have e i in e j, that this is the same e j in in more complicated case, we can, if we have some quadratic algebra which has the same size as algebra of polynomials in the I, we can find in the algebra just what people call it, the Grobner basis or things like that, the ordered monomial which gives us the, some candidates for the basis in the algebra. And you see, in our case, the EI plus 3 in J and EJ plus 3 in EI is some kind of relation we have. Therefore, uh, in our algebra, we have candidates for base. And this candidate is nothing like this. We can start with EI. Suppose the I is this. Then who will be the next? Next, if we have the I and the E I, if we have this times this, one, two, three. If we have this product to this, then we have rewrite in the opposite order using relation. Therefore, in our algebra is the following candidate of the basis. I have first element EI. Then I have EI minus in this direction, minus 2 plus something. Now EI1, left, right, EI2, EI3, and so on. But such that I2 is bigger than I1 minus 2. I3 is bigger than I2 minus 2. And so on. So, element, this element next can be something from this. And if it can be, for example, this. Next can be this or bigger. Next can be this or bigger, and so on. And so, uh, no, from quad quadratic relation, we definitely, you know, if you believe in my quadratic relation, that surely you can rewrite uh, the element and express any element from the algebra through this kind of basis. Yes, and uh, but as usual in Grobner basis, since you need some additional arguments to say that it will be really the big. And, uh, and uh, no, it is not evident that this is not our subject, but nevertheless, just formulate it as I want. That uh, I can't prove that for, for generic Q1, Q2, Q3, such uh, monomial give us a basis in the uh, Okay, and, uh, so now we more or less understand how big this algebra is and uh, what else that uh, I do not 
No, no. Well, but the description of the algebra is uh, what is. Uh, Polynomial, one variable, then polynomial in two variables. In three variables and so on. And uh, this structure, mm, it's too much to fail. This structure in some correspondence is this, this structure of the basis. You have these two here. And this two related with the fact that in the basis I shift by two uh, the, the element of, of, of the base. No, that I, no. Well, the statement is that if you want to count by a natural way the, the rational function, the symmetric the rational function, which has the full of such type of the, of the diagonal that combinatorially if you do it you have to work with the same process the basis in this space natural basis in this, in this space without any q without any shuffle algebra has the same structure uh, it is uh, one thing maybe uh, it will be more clear later But next uh, statement. Well, uh, now we more or less understand what is happening for generic Q1, Q2, Q3 in some sense. But uh, uh, algebra generated by this first part in, in, in existence of this uh, resonant condition have to be small. It means the following thing that. Uh, uh, again, suppose uh, q1, q2, q3 is 1, but uh, uh, otherwise q1, q2, q3 are generic. In this case, corresponding algebra, uh, which uh, is subalgebra generated by di, uh, what kind of relation? First, quadratic relation. Same what I presented there, but uh, plus cubic relation. Yes, and these cubic relations I will explain in a moment, and uh, Example of cubic relation. Now, this uh, algebra, it uh, 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 it has a rather remarkable property. And this property says this following that, uh, well, I have generations in zero, in zero, in one, in minus one, in two, in minus two, and so on. Then uh, I can write down just uh, this is also the let me call it not theorem but proposition uh, the difference is that what I call proposition uh, maybe later a little bit later maybe even today I'll explain how to prove it but uh, First of all, what does it claim? It claims that in this algebra, a bracket t minus 1 t1 commutes with this unit. Uh, 
later, later we will see even more, but uh, uh, and what I write here, this one, this is an example of cubic relief. The ring cannot follow from quadratic relation, which <coughs> I wrote it as something new. And it is really depends on the fact that q1 times q2 times q3 is 1. How to see <coughs> other in cubic relation? That uh, shuffle algebra has, uh, no, it is uh, this algebra is so simple that. Uh, the uh, shuffle algebra has a rather big group of symmetry, or infinite, infinite is the most symmetry. Then uh, it, it concerning any shuffle algebra. Uh, suppose that we have uh, a shuffle algebra with some function lambda z1, z2. And does not matter uh, even what function it is. Then uh, 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 it's much more general, but in our case, suppose that an algebra generates by just the, the index. Yes, and uh, so it is a, a algebra is a zero plus v one plus v two plus so on. Then uh, on this shuffle algebra. We have big commutative three algebra is F. Yes, and in this case, uh, the action is following. Uh, this V algebra is uh, infinite dimensional the algebra. It has the basis H i. I belong to C. And H i acting on a space A m by following simple way. Uh, H I acting as a function F one so on N is equal F one the N times the sum of the alpha all So this is just product to a symmetric Newton polynomial, and it gives us uh, the symmetry, the infinite zone symmetry of the L. And uh, so it means that, for example, such no, and the, uh, this is completely evident from the formula for the product. You know so. And it means that, for example, in this case, such H i, if I apply to the generator from G, it gives me B i plus G. Yes, and, uh, well, and surely if this is cubic relation, and if this algebra has such symmetries, so I can construct new cubic relation by acting, say, by H1 to this. Uh, I can, because this is zero, I can act by H1 to this, and uh, write what does it mean. It, it gives me what? It gives me, for example, in this case, E0, E1, plus 
minus 1 is 2 is 0 and plus third term e minus 1 e1 and e1 again and this is also square and uh, so I can uh, produce a lot of cubic relations by this way no, yeah, sure, I can repeat this. I can take h1 again, then apply h minus 2, and get a lot of cubic relation. And, uh, and uh, here, our statement, what I was, that this algebra defining relation are quadratic and cubic. Quadratic, I said before, cubic is a but uh, if you <coughs> want to ask about the no cubic relations are describing yes, but a little bit on the I took some relation which I claim is correct, and then start to act by symmetries and get a new relation. But uh, it's a, a natural question. How many uh, uh, the minimum choice of this cubic relation? And uh, I want also to formulate this here, uh, point three. That the algebra shuffle is great. Uh, but, uh, you know, it, it uh, has at least two gradients. One gradient is uh, like this, a zero, a one, and two, and so on. But it also has gradient that degree the i equal i. And from this point of view, relation can be homogeneous. And, uh, for example, relation e minus one, e one, the degree of this relation is zero. And uh, my statement is that uh, here, that the minimum choice of cubic relation we need two relations in each degree. So it means, for example, in degree zero, we have this relation and one more. In degree one, we have also two relations. In degree three, three, we have two relations. In all degree, we have two relations. And so uh, uh, what I explained that uh, shuffle algebra has two relations, uh, quadratic relations, and also <coughs> cubic relations of such sort. Now, No, one question is uh, how much familiar this uh, situation with generators and relations, and do we know some other algebras which set structure of uh, relation? And the fact uh, the answer is yes, and this is what I explained, Scott explained, maybe. four hours ago in the same place. Yes, and uh, uh, I uh, determine uh, in the end of my previous lecture the 
algebra V algebra of Hamiltonian vector fields on and torus. And what uh, I want to explain and wanted to explain, but maybe do it now, that uh, actually in some sense it is a rather close object. Well, but uh, let me recall what is it was. So we had C star times C star, function of C star times C star is well polynomials in universe. So we had such an equation. And uh, Poisson structure here is very simple. It was PQ equals U. Yes, and uh, let me uh, not to repeat. Uh, the structure, but uh, no, well, it is not very complicated. But P I P G. So we have the algebra with the base P I Q G. So basis is labeled by two dimensional vectors, and uh, so we have P I Q G P I prime Q G prime. And according to this, it is what? It is P I plus I prime, Q J plus J prime. And here we have I J prime minus J prime. It is a it is a real algebra. Uh, rather just simple, rather simple. In algebra with, uh, with the same basis, uh, with same basis. And uh, uh, so I draw the letters. Well, and what uh, actually we have in my algebra? First of all, we have U, U inverse, which, uh, uh, no, it's important, but maybe uh, I will not use it. But uh, we also have what, so it, it was origin here, it was Q, Q squared, Q inverse. Well, here I have C, Q, Q inverse times P. Then I have C, Q, Q inverse, and P square, and so on. Well, and uh, now, uh, yeah, now in this <coughs> three in algebra, uh, uh, I want to restrict myself only this subalgebra, this subalgebra of my real algebra. So where power of p appear, uh, uh, this power is uh, bigger than c. Now first of all, this real algebra generated by this part and let the i be equal q i power p. Then uh, in this Lie algebra, we definitely have quadratic relations. And this quadratic relation were what? That, uh, uh, no, the object which I want to compare with my shuffle algebra is universal enveloping of this n. The n will be an equipotent subalgebra 
uh, all things of adjustment, near patent notation for this uh, read algebra and so it EI are uh, generated. Well, and now uh, what we have? We have uh, EI uh, EJ is equal, I think, J minus I to some element F that notation that F I plus G. F I plus G is up to sign is uh, what is Q I plus G times T squared. No, it is evident from so it, <coughs> it means that a quadratic relation in my algebra is just uh, uh, what gives me this. So it means that For students, in the just abbreviation for something which is possible to calculate uh, with more complicated, complicated or less complication. But anyway, the uh, problem for students will be the following. Suppose we have <coughs> the algebra generated by some symbol AI. I belong to C. And uh, suppose that defining relations are quadrated. And uh, uh, just this. So we, as a result, we get some degree algebra uh, generated by I, which uh, and this we I just subject of some quadratic relation, and we also can ask ourselves what size of this algebra will be, what basis in this, uh, and we can ask about the algebra, uh, and we can ask about universal enveloping algebra also. And for me, universal enveloping algebra is more important, but it is surely interesting for the algebras also. Uh, anyway, the, uh, uh, we have two facts. That in universal enveloping algebra of this, the algebra E, basis is just is given just the same monomial which I uh, described here when talked about the, uh, this shuffle algebra for generic Q1, Q2, Q3. So what's the situation? I said that for generic Q1, Q2, Q3, this uh, algebra, uh, shuffle algebra satisfy some quadratic relation. Looking to this quadratic relation, in principle, we can conjecture uh, later, we'll probably prove that such monomials, which I explained here, give me the basis. 
here is actually the same story, but for real. But in, in the corresponding universal is another thing else about uh, a quadratic uh, relation which I impose here gives us the same structure of the space. So it means that the basis here will be precisely the same. And by the way, even uh, in this case, no, it is not complicated. A little bit more complicated is the fact that which maybe I do not know a precise answer, but uh, suppose you are interested not in uh, universal developing, but Lie algebra. And in, in Lie algebra, you can ask, no, about Lie algebra what? Uh, we start, we have quadratic relations. Well, so what does it mean? I have the R. Fine. Quadratic relation means <coughs> that quadratic relations are homogeneous. So it means that corresponding to algebra, this is the part in degree one. In degree two, we will have all brackets, and these brackets are this F. And so, uh, in degree two, I have so in degree one, I have this. In degree two, I have this. I have zero, one, minus one, and so on. Well, in our real algebra, which we are talking about now, I mean this Hamiltonian algebra, in degree three, we have object like C, Q, Q inverse. We have PQ in, in degree 3. So it means in our real algebra here, we have all, all, also one element in each grade. But suppose we uh, do not talking about this algebra, but suppose we have just algebra with quadratic relation, and we can ask what we get here just from Yakuda identity. We can use, I can calculate brackets, I can use quadratic relation and Jacob identity, and the question how many elements I get here. It is simple calculation. This, at least for me, it is also for students. And you can easily find that uh, in each degree, only three elements survive. So, for example, uh, here I will have bracket this with this, but two more elements. Uh, and uh, you can continue this and just ask how many elements we get here. And uh, if you're asking about uh, the answer, answer is the dimension in each place of this algebra research quadratic rela uh, relation is the number of some trees, some problem. And uh, I'm not sure that it is really known. Maybe it is known uh, to some. I, uh, I never knew the correct answer, but it is uh, something like this. Anyway, but if you're just talking about what is happening here, this is just five or ten minutes calculation, and you immediately see that it will be this. And by the way, uh, uh, no, you can. No, no reason to do it uh, just uh, immediately. You can believe me, at least this is it. And, uh, uh, well, the, and the fact is the following. Okay, but uh, this happening in the algebra when we have only quadratic relation. But in our real algebra, in each place here, we have only one. Therefore, we need to extra relation to kill elements which we do not like. Therefore, 
in this algebra, which we have here, we have quadratic relation and two cubic relations in each of the Yes. And uh, this uh, is uh, easy to check. And even after this, uh, it is not the problem, just some calculation that uh, actually for this real algebra defining relation just quadratic and cubic, like in our shop world. Uh, not so much time, it's not good to start something new. So let me say uh, one bit more, a little bit more, but well, you see that. Uh, Again, naively, we can see what is going on. That uh, on, on the level of uh, shuffle algebra, if we consider Q1, Q2, Q3 generic, then if you believe me about the only quadratic relation, then uh, in uh, Q1, Q2, Q3 generic, no <coughs> real condition, nothing like that. And it means that in the cubic part, we have uh, things like this. And but if uh, q1, q2, q3 equal 1, then I explain that this, this part becomes smaller. Smaller because of two real conditions. And two will condition it means that uh, in this case, this space becomes smaller and smaller uh, by a half. It is uh, zero on two derivatives. The two over Q1 equal Q1, and the three over the two equal Q2. And also we can replace Q1, Q2. So, it, so it's smaller in each degree by two elements. Because function on the diagonal, they, they grade. Function on the shift the diagonal are graded by integers. And so algebra becomes smaller by in each degree by two elements. And this is in a correspondence with the fact that we have two cubic relations. And so uh, uh, by this way, all this looks understandable. And, uh, Uh, no, one, one thing which I had in mind in my previous lecture, well, uh, we have this shuffle algebra and we have this universal envelope of this real algebra and they look similar, at least from the point of no generator convolution. If yes, then we expect to have some flat family of algebra uh, which in some special point is universal enveloping of this, and in generic point is just shuffle algebra if you want to use it. Yes, and, uh, but, and it is true, it is possible to do. But uh, a little bit easier to do the following. Uh, let us uh, consider not uh, also torus. And uh, uh, we can take uh, now not algebra of the Hamiltonian vector fields or, or not torus, but a sort of quantization of this, which people call it a quantum torus. It means that uh, function on quantum torus uh, is some algebra uh, 
let us put capital P and capital Q here. And uh, no, and also P inverse Q the inverse. Yes. And uh, but it is non commutative algebra. Relations are T Q equal Q small Q P. Here is Q completely different from that, Q is parameter. Yes, and uh, by this way you get uh, some associative algebra. And by the way, this associative algebra is just the algebra of difference operators on a line. Because uh, one Q is the product. No, this algebra is acting in function in Q, Q in. Q is acting by product to Q, and P is acting by sheet. Then uh, we can take, so anyway, this is associative algebra. And uh, I can make up from this associative algebra the algebra of this operator AB minus BB. Yes, and uh, In this case, it is not a big surprise that this object is not far from this. And uh, in some sense, yes, it is not far. And we can, but uh, especially if we ask the same question. Well, so this is the algebra uh, uh, now. And uh, it has commutative subalgebra. So And it has uh, C, Q, Q minus P, and it has C, Q, Q minus P square, and so on. Uh, and the same question. We can consider this uh, the algebra, and again, uh, uh, in this Lie algebra, uh, the question about generators and relations, and uh, yes, and uh, uh, let us do the same thing. So, Pi now will be Qi times P, and uh, if we calculate the i in G, so what it will be? It will be uh, uh, no, in, even in general it is simple, but uh, we have QI and we have QGP, and so it will be Q small QG minus Q small I, and here it will be QI plus J times P squared. Yes, again I can confuse I and J, but up to this, it is correct. Yes, and then uh, in such algebra, we have now quadratic relations, which are just the same, but we have to put here QI minus QJ, and here QI prime minus Q C prime. Yes. And, uh, no, and uh, you can easily guess that I want to say that here the structure is completely the same. So again, we have quadratic relation, we have two cubic relation in each degree, and they will be defining relations in my algebra. Yes. By the way, and it is closer to shuffle algebra in the sense that it is easier to say how to proceed. But uh, I have shuffle algebra and it depends on Q1, Q2, Q3. 
And uh, if I take some parameters to two and send it to one, then first of all, uh, naively, uh, shuffle function becomes symmetric because here we have z1 minus z2 and it is transferred to z1 here and q1, q2, q3 is 1 so we have this and this and totally we have symmetric function in the limit it's an algebra that generates the commutative function in such a situation uh, we can do this and if we have a family of algebras we do, do, do generate to commutative algebra. We can examine this situation by two different ways. One way we can know this way is uh, the generation to commutative algebra, so we can study the Poisson structure. And if this is the situation, surely. Or we can do different. Now, because uh, our <coughs> algebra for generics 1 to 2 q series satisfying this uh, generate by EI and uh, such EI as I said satisfying quadratic and cubic relation then we can make up limit in the relations so just write down relations uh, between EI and then in this relation, make up limit when this Q2 go to 1. Then a relation will go to some relation, also quadratic and cubic, and they just satisfy, uh, uh, coincide with quadratic and cubic relation for this algebra. So uh, I have universal enveloping of this real algebra, which is starting to and uh, I, as I said, this algebra satisfying quadratic and cubic relation. And we can get quadratic and cubic relation just by some such limit. And uh, by the way, uh, no, about cubic relation, I will say more uh, a little bit. But uh, checking about quadratic relation, it is very handle things. You can take them. And Q and look what is going on. Anyway, if you have family of algebra, it is a situation which is happening in many cases. And, uh, sometimes it is it's looking not very easy, but you see that and they even produce some surprise. You have family of algebra, you take parameters, these parameters are going somewhere, and you are looking what kind of limit you can get there. Now, the experience, uh, human experience, says us that in principle, a lot of, in interesting situation, you can do it by many ways. And this, uh, no, in quantum group business, it's a standard system. Yes. Now, uh, okay, now it is maybe time to start.